This video demonstrates parts of herpes simplex virus replication. Here is the structure of herpes simplex virus showing glycoproteins in the herpes envelope. Additionally, below the envelope is the tegument protein and below that is the icosahedral capsid containing double-stranded DNA. The first part of viral replication is that the virus binds to receptors on the surface of the cell membrane. There are three main cell receptors that facilitate virus entry. Viral ligand GB, GD and heterodimer GH, GL bind to receptors shown in the animation. After ligand receptor binding, the virus fuses with the plasma membrane and releases the capsid into the cytoplasm. Once the capsid is in the cytoplasm, it must be transported to the nucleus. This is done by moving with tinin proteins across the microtubules of the cell towards the nucleus. The double-stranded DNA is then released into the cell's nucleus. The double-stranded DNA then circularizes. Now we look at herpes simplex virus genes and their expression. There are three main clusters of herpes genes. These include immediate early genes, early genes, and late genes. First, we look at immediate early genes. Immediate early genes are expressed by the binding of the complex consisting of VP16, OCT1, HCF1 to the promoter of immediate early genes. Then RNA polymerase 2 synthesizes mRNA transcripts. mRNA transcript that we will be looking at now is ICP27. The mRNA is transcribed and then it moves to the cytoplasm and is synthesized into a protein. This protein interacts with spliceosome. As you can see, the spliceosome splices mRNA molecule and thus removes introns, leaving exons in the mRNA. ICP27 prevents spliceosome from removing introns from mRNA. Now we look at a second immediate early gene. This immediate early gene is called ICP47. The transcription of an immediate early gene occurs and then it is translated into the ICP47 protein. This protein then moves to the endoplasmic reticulum. This is ER lumen, the cytoplasm, TAP1, TAP2 proteins, MHC class 1 molecule. The spliceosome degrades the viral protein and the peptide moves through the TAP1, TAP2 protein into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen and binds to MHC class 1 molecule. It is then moved to the cell surface for recognition by the immune system. ICP47 blocks peptide transport through TAP1, TAP2 channel and thereby preventing immune system recognition. Now we look at the third and final immediate early gene. This gene is transcribed and then translated into ICP4 protein. This protein activates early genes and late genes. Now we look at early genes. Early genes are responsible for replication of viral double-stranded DNA and late genes are responsible for structure of proteins. During replication, the origin binding protein UL9 binds to the origin of replication site. These proteins then form a replication bubble. Three proteins UL5, UL8, U and UL52 bind to the origin site and act as a helicase that unwinds double-stranded DNA. It also acts as a primer, placing short RNA sequences complementary to the DNA. DNA polymerase then synthesizes a leading and lagging strand of complementary DNA. The first type of replication is theta replication. Then a replication switches to rolling circle replication. A long concatameric DNA strand is synthesized and then the genome is packed into a capsid. Now the capsid bites into the endoplasmic reticulum and moves towards the Golgi body. It bites out of the endoplasmic reticulum and then bites into the Golgi body where it gains its envelope. It moves then across the Golgi body, bites out of the Golgi body and then bites out of the plasma membrane.